Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial on creating the Solver Answer Report in Microsoft Excel. My name is Renee Clark. There are several types of answer reports within Microsoft Excel's Solver. The answer report itself is the most useful. It summarizes the results of a successful solution. There are also sensitivity reports and limits reports. These are generally used in the science and engineering fields and they allow you to quantify the reliability of the solution. This lecture will not cover the sensitivity and limits reports. Here's an example of an answer report. You'll notice that we have our objective cells listed that it's a maximum cell, what the cell is, what the original value is, what the final value is. You'll also see we have variable cells listed, the original value, the final value, and what type they are. And then lastly we have the constraints listed. And part of what you see here is the status of the constraint. They can be binding constraints, or non-binding. The binding constraints are those that must be included as they are limiting factors in the solution. The non-binding constraints do not need to be included within the solver model. You'll also notice there's a last column here in the constraints called slack. Slack is the difference between the value of the cell and the limit of the constraint. Next, I will be demonstrating for you how to create your answer reports. Please watch this brief demonstration on a live file in Excel. To see the answer reports in Solver, you first obviously need to run Solver. So very quickly, I'm going over to Data Ribbon, go to Solver, and I've already built my Solver model. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Now that my Solver results have popped up, Instead of just selecting to keep the solver solution, I'm going to go ahead and select Answer, ensure that Outline Reports is checked, and then click OK. The solver answer report will gen be generated, and it will show up in a tab to the left of the current worksheet I'm using Solver in. Here it is. It comes in with the outline mode on and you can see I have plus signs over here so I can unroll for further results and you can see very detailed results of your solution. Now finally in this lecture we'll be covering saving and loading solver models. When you have your Solver Parameters dialog box open. You've gotten some solver models created. Oftentimes you may want to save them so that you can load them up later and look, compare and contrast between different options. And you'll see here on the Solver Parameters dialog box right here there is a Load and Save button. So once you have your parameters set, your solver model built, you simply click that button. This will open the Load Save Model dialog box. From there you select a range of empty cells to save the model to or to load the model from. When saving you will need as many empty cells as you have number of cells in your solver model. If you are not sure, add a couple extra cells when you're saving to be sure that you have enough room for it. My example is using eight empty cells. Once you have models saved, you can then go select the range that you would like to load in to see that other result and go ahead and load that. It's a good idea when you're saving ranges that you also label them well. You'll notice on the example shown here I have labeled my model as maximum net income model. That gives you an idea when you come back to work after a little time away or if you have multiple solutions that you're trying to 
hold on to and keep for options that you'll be able to load up the correct one. Next, I'll be demonstrating how to do this in a live file. If you have any questions, please let your professor know. More of my lectures can be found on YouTube by searching for Renee K. Clark and then subscribing to my channel. You will find a variety of Excel lectures available as well as selected other lectures.